What's up, guitar friends? Welcome back to James Brady Guitar. In this episode, we're gonna take this beautiful Les Paul Custom, give it some TLC, bring it back to life. This Les Paul Custom was given to me by my friend Scott. We were in the same band together in Rooftop Rebellion. You should check that out. Uh, so this guitar is his. Um, it's been hanging up in his living room for a long time. Uh, there's been no strings on it. And I kept telling him, dude, let me get my hands on this and make it awesome for you because it's a beautiful guitar. I mean, it's an Epiphone, as you can see, but it's the Les Paul Custom style. So you know, it, it mimics the Gibson Les Paul Custom. This is the highest end uh, Epiphone you can get. So definitely our sweet guitar, plus it just looks awesome. So when this thing gets cleaned up, it's gonna look badass. Before we get started on breaking down this guitar, what I like to do with certain things, uh, certain projects like this, um, is I just wanna kinda eyeball it to, you know, things that are glaring at me that say, hey man, this needs to be fixed. So we know right off the bat, those are problem areas so we can get the right tools out. And if we don't have those tools, we can go look for them, buy them, uh, you know, whatever we need to fix the guitar, at least we know, you know, what we need to get that job done. So right off the bat, you can look and see these bridge pieces, the tail and the bridge here. Uh, they're just like locked onto their posts, which shouldn't happen. So we're going to have to remove these and clean everything. Um, you know, gravity should make this fall off the bottom piece and that should fall off, but it didn't. So we're going to have to take those off and clean them. Uh, right here, if you haven't seen already, this pickup is reversed. Screws should be out, like the uh, bridge pickup here. So we're gonna have to open that, flip it around, clean it. We'll probably open this too, and just you know, for cleaning sake, our uh, three-way switch not doing too good. <laughs> um, you can't really tell on camera, but it doesn't really stay in the other positions. Hopefully, again, that's just a cleaning thing and not something you know wrong with the switch. We'll probably pull the knobs off the potentiometers and clean these out. They're a little gunky. Um, input jack looks fine. It's a little loose, but we can fix that. There is no pick guard. There are screw holes for it. Someone probably took that off. So what I might do is go get another one with the uh, brackets just to put it on there. Probably look cool. Um, other than that, it looks okay. Just eyeballing it. You'll, other thing you might want with a guitar that hasn't had strings for this long, is to just eyeball the neck and make sure that it's uh, at least semi-straight. You can't really tell just by eyeball unless you're like a super professional, which I'm not. <laughs> so, but if you do look straight down the neck, you can kind of see, you know, it's pretty straight. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And then also the relief, which, you know, you're just trying to eyeball right now to make sure the guitar is like at least in working order. Um, the relief you kind of tell more with the strings on because then you can tell how far the board is moving like this or the other way. Um, and then you, you use a truss rod to fix that. But as of right now, just looking at it, it actually looks pretty straight. So that's all good. As long as the neck is good, you can pretty much fix any guitar. So with that being said, let's get this guy set up. We'll get our area set up. We'll bring out some tools and then we'll really get our hands onto this guitar. Hey there, welcome to my dining room. Or for me, my workshop. Not everyone has a garage or a workbench and stuff like that. So you gotta make do with what you have. I live in an apartment, so my dining room converts to my workshop whenever I work on guitars. So there you go. The first things first, we need a good cup of coffee to get started. Ah, now I feel like working on a guitar. We also need music. You can't just work in silence. So today I picked out this album by The Sword called Warp Riders. Thank you The Sword for making awesome music that I can fix guitars to. Um, so that's what we need. Let's get to the tools and the setup and uh, show you how I like to work in this area. First step is to pick your spot. So this is obviously my dining room table. Um, it's not the most convenient spot, I guess, but it'll do for me. Uh, I put down a towel so I don't mess up the guitar or the table or whenever I'm spraying or something, it just goes on the towel, we clean that after. 
I got this guitar neck rest, which I highly, uh, highly suggest. If you don't have something like this, uh, a couple pillows or something that you don't really care about will work. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that is pretty good. Um, other than that, as far as the space is concerned, you know, you want to have some wipes. Shop towels are great. Uh, if you have like a couple extra rags, like microfiber, those would work too. Um, you know, and then just having your tools out. I have this box of stuff, <laughs> which I have everything sort of coordinated. And that's kind of what you want. You want to set up stuff in front of you, so if you need it, you're not running back and forth and you kind of have a good workflow. Uh, that's important to me. And I always feel like it helps me keep my thoughts together. Sometimes I can get scatterbrained. I'm working on one thing and then I'm like, oh, I need to fix this. If I don't have the right tools in front of me, I could lose track of what's going on. That's also me, because I'm crazy and neurotic. Um, all right, let's break out the tools and show you what we're gonna need for this job. First thing you're probably gonna be grabbing for while you're taking off parts are some screwdrivers. Guitars have small parts, so you're gonna need like a screwdriver like this. This is a Phillips head, very small. This is a flat head. I have a few of these. So screwdrivers is number one. Next thing is also some cutters, some wrenches. Some wrenches like this are, are good. This is sort of a JIC, just in case one, uh, but it's good to have on hand. I got a bag of Allen keys, some more wrenches, all different sizes, um, and then these truss rod keys, because I'm not really sure what this truss rod is. We'll have to see when we open it, but I do have a bunch of them, so hopefully one of these works. Hopefully we don't even have to adjust the truss rod. It's just awesome. I doubt it, but you know we'll get there. When we do, these are also handy. So after using those tools to remove pieces of the guitar, you're gonna wanna probably clean it, get some gunk off, polish up your frets. Uh, best thing for that is some fine steel wool. This usually has a bag that has four zeros on it, four O steel wool, four zero steel wool, however people wanna say it. But this is really good for polishing your frets. It's also good on the guitar. Just have to note here that it does uh, kind of fall apart. So you wanna cover your electronic cavities like pickups and stuff like that. Just tape them off or put a cloth over them and hold it down because uh, this can get in there and mess stuff up. So next thing you're gonna wanna do is address your fretboard, uh, particularly your frets on this guitar. I can just look at it and see that they're oxidized and stuff, so there might be some issues as far as even the level of the frets. So what we want is called a fret rocker. It's this instrument here. Uh, what you do is you place it flat on the board and move it back and forth. And if it moves and you have some frets that are a little taller than others, and that could create a problem when we put strings on with string buzz. So I'll show you that later on, but how we take care of that is we get a fret leveler. This block here has some sandpaper. We can go over the frets, level them out. And then last but not least, since that levels them, we'll have like kind of square ended frets. We don't want that and want them to be round. So we get this crowning file and um, you put this on top, very light, and it just brings them back to that nice round form and you'll have beautiful frets. Next thing you're gonna want is a fretboard ruler. These are great. Uh, all these notches where your frets are, you put this right on the fretboard, and then you can see definitely how much relief you have in the neck, if it's perfectly straight, or if it's rocking, or if there's a little bit of relief here in the middle, that's not bad. Uh, so we'll put this on uh, after we're done cleaning everything up and see how our neck is dealing. All right, we've gotten to the part where we're gonna clean the guitar, which is usually the most fun part for me, because it's just, I don't know, makes the guitar look awesome. So there's a bunch of stuff you can do. Uh, with a guitar that has a lot of gunk on this, especially on the finish, you could use some like car polish stuff like this is pretty good just to kind of get in there and clean it up. Uh, you can get like a nice microfiber cloth like this guy and use that very you know liberally, get in there and then wipe it off with any excess with a cloth. You're gonna really want some elbow grease with the polish though, so if you're not gonna do that, you can get any other type of cleaner. Even just some water on a rag will do if you just have some light scuffing. But yeah, this stuff works good. Don't be afraid to get this kind of, it's just, it's a finish like anything else. So it'll just polish that up and clean up your finish, which is cool. Uh, other stuff we can use, we have um, from Crimson Guitars has good products. Um, this is a fretboard and uh, finish cleaner. This stuff is great. It's just some light oils. Uh, like I said, if you have just some light gunking or whatever, this is pretty good. This is good on your fretboard too. You can wipe it off. Um, then I have fretboard restorative which you kind of let and sit on the wood, brings the fretboard back to life. This is also a Crimson Guitars product. This is super cool. You don't need it all the time. Uh, every now and then, not even every now and then, just like maybe once every six months or if your guitar's like this one's been kind of neglected, you want to get that fretboard nice and good. This is cool for that. 
And then also a product that's in a bunch of stores, which I love, is called Guitar Honey. This is really good for the fretboard of the neck too. Sometimes I'll even spray it on the finish just to kind of rub out some dirt. These are really good. Uh, there's a million ways to clean your finish. Some people spit on it and they're fine like that. They don't do anything else, uh, swear by it. I like to put a little bit of product on the guitar. I feel like it cleans up a lot of the dirt. And I hate dirty guitars. I love when you play on stage and they look awesome. So I like a little bit of cleaner on mine. Most important part at the end is we're gonna need some strings. <laughs> So I got a pack of 11s here from Ernie Ball uh, on this scale guitar. I love 11s. I might actually go to the store and downgrade the 10s because I'm not sure what my buddy likes. Uh, this is a little heavy, but I prefer them. So it's all up to preference there. And then a string winder always comes in handy. I like to have a little toothbrush like this. This is like a kid's toothbrush. And before you put the strings on, I just love getting in to all the little spots like underneath the bridge and things like that. Or even when you put the strings on, so this way the bridge is nice and locked up, you can get in there and clean all those little crevices and get all the dirt out. These things are awesome and they're cheap. So good buy there. And last but not least, the most important tool is I got my glasses on today so I can see what I'm doing. Nerd all right, alert. let's fix this guitar. Tighten it a bit and clean it. But other than that, it looks okay. Let's try to take these bridge pieces off. Okay, we got one by hand. Cool. So when you get these off, um, obviously you're going to clean this up. But um, whenever you take pieces off the guitar, I always like to keep them in sort of like a designated area. So right now I have this sort of top area. I'm just gonna put my bridge piece here and then any other stuff associated. Okay, cool. So that came off too. I could probably take these screws out completely. So if you never knew on your bridge, on your Gibson, these screws come completely out, these posts. And these are just pressed into the wood. So you can take these out completely without messing anything up. Now, if you have a guitar that's already kind of set up and you're just doing a string change, you definitely don't want to do this. Um, you know, you'll lose your spot. What you could do, which I'll do later, is you could take something rule like this, like our string changer guy, and you could put it directly to it and measure how far you are, mark it off. What I'll probably do is grab my Les Paul later I'll measure um, the bridge posts um, and at least get in the ballpark of where this action is going to be nice. Um, should be similar sort of setup. Um, you know, you also have to adjust or pick up height and things like that. But um, you know, we'll get there when we get there. So, like I said, with the wrench, you know, you want to apply some pressure to get things like this off, but just be gentle. Um, this piece is not bad because you got the plastic cover, but you know, this isn't my guitar, so you want to just be cool with it. Like I said, pieces, we'll put them over here so we know what they are. Oof, it's stuck. It <laughs> shouldn't be stuck. Oh my god. So, this is kind of gross. This might be something that. I just go to the guitar store and I get a new one. These are super cheap, um, you know, just to replace it. I mean, I could just clean it up, but I don't know if I find a black and gold one that's just fresh, it'll look nice. I might even try to find a new uh, bushing there. So I don't know, but we'll see. I just want to make sure this guy works. I mean, it seems operational, but I don't know. I have to take something inside. Oh well, probably gonna have to open that up. So. That sucks. <laughs> all right, let's get all the stuff off we need. All right, so we just took our truss rod cover off. Just so if we do need to adjust it, we have access right there. It's like a typical Gibson wrench, not bad. So a lot of this work you don't really need to do if you're just doing, say, like a guitar setup, or like if you own you know, your guitar and everything's working fine and you're just trying to, you know, put new strings on, get it nice and clean. You don't really need to do all of this. 
but because this guitar has been kind of sitting around for a long time and it was bought used and never really checked up on, I just sort of want to make sure everything's like kosher on this guy. On the customs, they're nice and beveled in, so a little harder to get out, but totally look cool. Okay. And we see the inside of our pots. That looks pretty neat. Uh, yeah, nice and wound up. But yeah, so we can see on the inside there. Actually, nice, neat job. They have a wire wrapped, which seems a little strange to me. Maybe someone went in there, changed pickups or something. That's why that other one is reversed. But we'll see. So here's the moment of truth. You have to be honest with yourself in certain scenarios, particularly if it's not your own instrument, which this isn't. Um, this three-way switch is not, say, totally jacked up. It moves, and it most likely will go to the right pickups. Um, we'll have to figure that out when we test it. But um, I don't feel confident pulling it completely out and then looking at it because it's already giving me a hard time and I don't want to mess this up. And uh, especially the electronics back there, I'm, I'm not the best at soldering, so I don't want to really get into it too much. Um, what I will do is just try to clean it up and get this jack the best I can. Um, if at that point, uh, the person who owns this guitar says, hey, I want to get that fixed, then they can bring it to a professional or someone that's better than me. The last thing you want to do is Take it upon yourself to change something like that and possibly break it and then you're on the hook for this thing. Um, unless it was addressed in the beginning like, hey man, can you fix this and you said yes, then you're a dummy. But I never said I would do it, just get the guitar clean and ready to go. So this will be something I address when I give it back. I'll say, hey man, I did the best I can with this three-way switch, but it's a little flimsy. If you want to get that professional look at, that's on you. So you just have to be honest with yourself and your, comfortable, your comfortability level on working on a guitar. And uh, I don't feel comfortable doing that, so we're not. We're gonna try to clean it, and that's that. I wanna get these up so I can clean underneath them and also see the condition of the pots. Um, these are a little hard to get off. I can see they're pretty close to the body. So you try by hand, you kind of wiggle. All right, that one came off pretty good. Oh, there's painter's tape on here. Okay, weird. Um, so that one came off pretty easily. That was a surprise. Um, what you can also do is if you know you don't have, there's, there are items you can to just kind of wrench them off. Um, you can sort of like wiggle a card in there and pull up on it. Sometimes it'll work. Oh, <laughs> it just fell. But that works too. These seem pretty easy because luckily there's painter's tape underneath. They're usually not that easy, but the card trick does work. Or you can get a shoelace and sort of wrap it around and pop it up. Um, what you should do is put something on top so that that thing doesn't fall all over the place. So I'm gonna go find that. I found it. We got four knobs. That's good. All right. Um, I don't know why there's painter's tape on here, but it's a good thing. We can cover them and we can get in here and clean these up because these look like they're in some pretty shabby condition right now. Okay, doke. Okay. All right. Next thing we have to do is fix this pickup. Uh, here's your note for anyone that's working on their guitar with the pickups or maybe had this problem. Um, just to know your four screws in the corners are the actual pickup ring and the pickup housing all together in one. So you can move that and then look, we could pick the whole pickup out of the guitar. These two are for pickup height. Um, we can do that later on when we put the strings on because I can't really tell right now. This does look a little high, just eyeballing it. That's just from playing guitar for a long time. but. Uh, this does look pretty good. This is the neck. It says it here. Uh, I'll zoom in on it, but it does usually pick up the sticker. It tells you what kind they are, where they're from, and whether they're neck or bridge. So you don't even have to really test the output of it. I mean, you can if you want to, but we don't have to right now. Good thing that we have this out of the guitar. Okay. I'm actually gonna do right now is just clean up around it a little bit before we put it back in and just make our job easier later on. 
Uh, this is good. This says LP Bridge. There's Les Paul Bridge, Les Paul Neck. They're both labeled Epiphone, so we know they're genuine Epiphone pickups. So this is probably stock, which is a cool thing. I don't know why this is wound the other way. Um, weird. But anyway, so everything's really dirty in here. We're gonna leave them out for a sec, clean around. Another note is to just, like I said, put your screws in piles because these are for the bridge. They're much longer because this casing is much bigger than the neck one. So you can tell, if you can see that, they're just different size. So you wanna make sure you just have, you know, the correct ones in the correct piles. So let's clean this up, we'll put our bridges back in, we'll clean up the body, start addressing some of the metal pieces and then we could start moving on to our fretboard. I'm trying to clean the whole guitar right now, but I figure while we have the pickups out, then we can get the gunk off where the ring is. It's not a bad idea. There's a lot of buildup on this. This will make it easier later. Let me go in for a better polish. I don't know if you can see too, the. Uh, this was the original color white. I'm trying to zoom in on this, but this was the original white and around it's actually faded, which is pretty cool. I think it makes it look, uh, I don't know, kind of vintagey, but it's pretty cool. I like it. I like it. I told you, man. The little brushes, good stuff. Now we'll do is we'll take the dry side and just dry up any excess. Cool. All right, so what I probably do is clean up these screws a little bit too because they're rusted. So we'll give those a little bit of a brush with the steel wool and get them going. All right, so our pickups are back in. They look good, they're straight. This one is the right direction. So what I want to do now is just clean up this body before we move on to the neck. Um, what I will do is use some painter's tape to cover our pickups to make sure Nothing gets in the cavities or messes them up, because that would suck. All right, so we're all clean with that. Then we're gonna take the same finish cleaner and uh, see how much we can get off without using anything that's super abrasive. And then, you know, whatever's left, we'll have to use something a little more powerful. Try to stay away from that stuff as much as I possibly can until I really need it. So let's try this out. So we did most of it, um, this is by hand right now with just a little bit of cleaner. And it's not bad, uh, it's pretty cool, but I feel like we can get a little bit better um, around here in between the bridge stuff up here are my biggest trouble spots. There's a, something, it's look, this might be a little bit of a stain or a chip, but along the edge too is some grime. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this 4L steel wool and just very, very lightly go along these spots and see if I could just loosen them up a bit and then go back with some cleaner. If you press with this, you will mess up the finish. So you like literally just very light kind of going over it, see if they could pull off any of that gunk. And once you do that, you're good money. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Oh, that's another tip when using it. You see how I went to almost go blow it away? You don't want to do that because you'll blow all these little steel wool pieces everywhere and that is not really what you want to do. So you can take your shop towel, if it's a little wet or has the cleaner on it still, and just pull them away from the guitar. You push them down onto your towel here or wherever if you're in your workshop, throw them on the floor. Um, but yeah, and as you can see, just that little light has taken away all this grime right on the carve here and it looks super cool. So we're gonna keep doing that. All right, so looking pretty good. We got a lot of gunk off. We got a lot of other stuff off the guitar. Uh, we were able to clean the bushings. We were able to clean around our potentiometers and get a lot of that rust off. The oxidizer, again, you know, it was nice that the painter safe is actually on because you don't want to mess up the poles, but everything's pretty good. Um, we, again, very light touch, got a lot of the gunk off, was able to get around here, and the finish is still standing, so we're good. Um, 
So we're gonna fast forward here. I'm gonna clean the entire body of the guitar, put the cavity covers back on since we're not gonna mess with the electronics because they all look, look good. And then we'll get on to the neck. All right, so we've taken cleaner and some light steel wool to the body and the neck. Uh, there was a lot of gunk on here. There's actually paint. Looks like someone painted their wall, right, with the guitar. Uh, I don't recommend that. But uh, yeah, so this is what we got going on. Much cleaner on the top. The sides, all that gunk is gone in the crevices. The gunk is gone by the horn was crazy. Uh, that's all gone. So yeah, we are looking pretty good. A uh, little, little bit of rust spots, but this guitar definitely looks like it's been played before. There's some belt rash on the back and things like that. So nothing you could do about that. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get into the neck. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is clean the headstock. I'm gonna take this steel wool again and just go over these uh, tuners and get all this gunk off. I don't know if you could see just kind of how gnarly those are right now. And the steel wool will just do a great job on the metal pieces because it will just kind of pull those off and get the shine right back. And um, we'll use some cleaner and uh, shot cloth to the headstock and do that. And then we'll come back and do some frets. Just so you see too, <clears throat> it looks shinier, but also just how much steel wool builds up when you do use it. So like I said, any uh, like your pickups, which are magnetic, you wanna make sure they're covered up. Or these things will get on there, and that's a bitch. So, clean that up. Just doing the uh, tuning post, I'm actually noticing how caked on everything is on the top. So I am gonna take this and just sort of lightly go over it. Again, gentle pressure. You know I'm using a lot of this. This is um, sort of outside the box with this. That is so much dirt and that's like really gunked on. Uh, usually you wouldn't do something like this. So, uh, you know, you just clean it with a cloth because you wouldn't have, but this is sort of extreme. Like I said, for oh steel wool, anything higher will really kind of cut through. Uh, this is good for that and use uh, light strokes just kind of go to push it off don't push into the wood no good tip there those good tips are good all right now we'll just clean that up and then we'll get to the frets 